Hello, it's me, Christy Friesen, and I am here to impress you today because we are going to make Impress Me Beads. This is part of our series of secrets to polymer clay that we've been working on, and this one is super fun. We're going to learn a couple new techniques today here at the Fire Mountain Gems and Beads Jewelry Making Studio. So, you know this whole series is such that I'm kind of reminded that everybody's got stuff to do. We don't have a lot of time to learn the whole history of everything. We just want to jump right in, make something fun, be impressed by a new material or something maybe you're just a little familiar with but want to learn more, and then go, wow, I made that. I'm impressed. So that's what we're going to do today. We're going to learn how to create a two-part silicone mold. What? So exciting. And then use that mold properly to put impressed bits of polymer clay onto a bead. Doesn't that sound exciting? And wait, there's more. After we're done baking the bead, we're going to use acrylic paints to antique it, to add color. Now, previously in this series, we've used powders and such, which I love, but there are other ways to add color to your polymer clay, and we're going to explore that today. So, are you ready? First of all, let me show you a couple of the finished beads. So what I've got here are some funky things. I like funky. So this is actually a mold, which we're going to talk about, of a sea urchin shell. And see all those little wonderful, weird, alien-looking dots and bumps? That's what I've used to create this bead. This bead here has some flourishes from some jewelry components. So maybe you found this awesome little jewelry bit, you know, you picked it up at the thrift store or you found it in a wonderful bag full of goodies and you've decided that if you made a mold of that, you could use it over and over and over, which is what this is. This, are, this one has little bits of leaves. So I made a mold of a leaf and then I made little bitty leaves out of that mold and my put them all around, and I don't even know what's going on with this bead, but wouldn't it make a great like lariat thing with a like, cool little cord and some dangly things? Yeah, I think so too. And there is one other kind of impressing that I'm going to show you, and that's a simple bead where we're using like a texture sheet or something to impress something in. So not only can we use the impressions we make out of a mold, but we can also use a stamp sheet and make impressions as well. So we got a lot to play with today. The first thing we have to do to be able to use a mold is to have a mold. Now, luckily, there's a lot of molds out there. For example, here at Fire Mountain Gems, they have a lot of silicone molds that you can buy already made. Somebody made some really fabulous little designs here. You can use these all day long. They're great. We're going to use one of these, and I'm going to show you how to make a perfect pulling impression out of a mold. We'll do that in a bit but you can also make your own. Like I talked about the sea urchin shell. You can also make molds of things like buttons, and we talked about the leaves, but I'm gonna do the buttons today. So what you're gonna wanna have is a bit of scrap clay. Now, after you make the mold, you can use this clay again. So it doesn't have to be something um, you know, that you're wasting for this. But I just ran it through the pasta machine or used my roller and folded it over so I had kind of a thick little pad there of clay. And then I'm going to get my thing to be molded. And this can be any number of things. In this case, it's a glass button with a little shank. And i am got this clay here so that I can push that down in. And I actually am going to have to make this a little thicker because there's quite a bit of shank on there. So if I can push that all the way down in, now my thing to be molded sits down on top of a flat surface, which just kind of lets the, um, the mold material have a place to settle. All right? And uh, there we go, I think we've got that perfectly. Now, mold material. Silicone mold material comes in a two-part compound. You're gonna take the same amount of part A and part B to create your mold. And these molds have various time frames of curing. Um, some of them take five minutes, others of them take 20 minutes. So just read the instructions, follow what they say, and you'll be fine. I eyeball this stuff. You definitely can weigh your material to make sure you're getting it exactly correct. I just eyeball it. And if you'll notice, I scooped it out, but then I'm using a different spoon because I don't want to cross-contaminate. I don't want to get part A into part B, which starts making it harden a little bit around that contact point. That would be bad. So I'm going to just try and eyeball the two parts to see if I'm close. 
I find that rolling it into a bit of a ball kind of helps me visualize that a little bit better. I think that's pretty good. Let's try that. Okay, we've got my two parts, and you're gonna mix these thoroughly. Mix it quickly. This particular mold material has a pretty fast cure time, and the minute you start molding, that clock is ticking, baby, and the heat of your hand just makes it go faster. So, maybe put on some really super fast music, drink a bunch of coffee, and you should be fine. Otherwise, just mold it in your fingertips like I'm doing until it's thoroughly mixed. You should see no streaks of color. If there's a streak of color, that means you didn't thoroughly mix it and the mold is gonna have a difficulty in setting up. All right, I think we're pretty good. See, take a look at this. You see no weird streaks. So I'm gonna roll this back up into a wad. Wads are helpful. And I'm gonna put it right on top and I'm gonna smosh it down. And that is the technical term for this. You're gonna smosh it. And what I'm trying to do is I'm trying to feel my way to making sure that I've got all of the edges taken care of just like that. And now you leave it alone. Although what you should also do is get a wet wipe. I have a little wet wipe here. I'm going to clean my fingers because I have mold material on them. It's non-toxic, non-hazardous, but some people are more sensitive to chemicals and it's always a good idea just to minimize our prolonged exposure to any kind of chemical material. So I'm going to just let that sit. In fact, let's get that out of there so we can do other things. Up you go. Bye, have fun drying, we'll check on you later. Okay, great, so now we've got our mold. We have alternative choices of molds. How do we make a bead? I think you know the answer to that. Polymer clay in a wad. Earlier in the series, we've delved in a couple of different interesting blending techniques. If you don't know what I'm talking about, that means you're catching the series somewhere in the middle. There's a whole bunch of them. So go back to the beginning of the series and watch all the stuff. Each one of these projects stands on its own, but there's some fun things that we learn in the beginning of the series that are useful later on. And you can also go to the, the description. There'll be different links and different information there to kind of help bring you up to speed on all of this stuff. All right, so we're gonna take a blended piece of polymer clay, just roll it around in our hands to make a wonderful bead shape. I'm gonna go with an oval because ovals amuse me. And now I've got my needle tool. We're gonna have to make a hole in this bead so you can wear it later. So I'm just gonna take my needle tool and sort of twist and push. I'm looking down on it so I can see that I'm going straight. I have a great habit of just like Mark, and it goes off to the side and it pokes out someplace where I don't want. If that happens, just pull it back, seal the hole with your fingers and try again. So once this comes through the other end, then I can lift the needle tool out, put it back through that other end, and push it through again to get a nice thin hole. But you know, a thin hole's not enough. I want a thicker hole, because what if I want to put a cord or a ribbon or something more substantial, because this is a fairly large bead. So I'm gonna take a, um, let's see, I've got a full one here. These are metal knitting needles. They also snap in half really well, so I just took my pliers and snipped it right in half, or my wire cutter, and uh, made, a smaller piece so that it's a little bit more handy to work with. You don't have to do that, but I find it handy. And so now I've got this nice little stem here and I can just put it in a piece of clay to hold it upright while I'm working. So I usually have a little bit of a scrap clay floating around and I can stab my uh, whole bit in there while I'm putting things on it. Because when you're putting impressions all around it, and you lay it down, now you're squishing things. We don't want that, so this is a nice little holder. And I actually have baked this so I can use it again and again. Um, it was a bit of clay that was getting hard anyway, so that seemed an appropriate thing to do with it. All right, so now let's make some impressions from a mold to put on our bead. Our, our one that we just made still a little tender. It's not ready to be used yet, but I'm gonna go ahead and use, oh, some of these other things that I have here. I'm thinking, why don't we first off Use this right here, silicone mold, uh, that someone else created and see how that works. This will be a really good example of how to make a perfect mold. Okay, show of hands of anybody who have seen a mold being made by putting a wad of clay in and then using your blade to slice it down to size. Yeah, a lot of you I see. So what you're gonna have to do instead is think it differently. What you want to do 
is to put in less clay for two reasons. Number one, you can make sort of a concave, shallower mold impression, which means it's just going to push onto that clay better and be less blobby looking. And also, you don't take the risk of having this blade that you're chopping into your mold, which is silly. So I'm going to take a little ball of clay like this, and I'm going to press this into the mold and shove it all around and try and fill in the gaps, but not get them too blobby. You see how that works? Look at that, I'm getting all the way around the edges. And then once I get it all filled, I'm actually gonna kind of pull it back from the edge so that I can see little bits of color all around. Now this is a pretty dense, uh, thick mold with a th uh, thick centerpiece so I can see a little bit of clay is um, being poked through by the mold. So I'm gonna fill that up a little bit more. All right, so now we've got a perfectly filled mold. You should be able to just Play like this and pop that baby right out. And take a look at that. It is 100% perfect with no trimming, no slicing, no crying. It's perfect. So we're gonna take this little guy now and we're gonna put it on our bead. Now, if you want to make it stick on your bead without a lot of smashing, and I tend to like less smashing, you're gonna maybe use a little bit of liquid clay. Liquid clay is a great way to help clay stick together. So I'm gonna just put a dab or two here. It's not a glue, it's a clay to clay connection. All right, come on out there, baby. Put it on, smear it around with my finger. Should be good, wipe that off. And now I'll just be able to put it right on my piece. Now I'm gonna just press gently all around. I'm gonna sort of pull on it to see if it's wiggly and loose. Cause if it's too slippery, What's going to happen if I bake it is which is not the most fun. So I'm going to press that on there. Perfecto. Now, if you want, once this is pressed on, you always have the option of making this look more like a complete part of the bead by using your tool and just getting in there and blending some of this directly onto the surface. You have that option of just uh, incorporating the entire mold into the whole piece. But you don't have to, you can just lay it on the surface. A lot of these, that's all I did is just lay little blobs all over the surface. It works great either way. All right, so now what we would wanna do with that is just keep on adding more. And the nice thing to remember is that you don't have to use the entire mold. You can use just a piece of it. So for example, let's go back to this one right here, which I really like. I'm gonna see, ooh, that center piece is great. That's all I want. So I'm gonna take a little ball, roll it up. When you roll it in your hands like this, it gets warm, it gets flexible, it won't crack when you use it. Flatten it a little bit, lay it where you want it to be, smash it down, lift it off, and look, now you have a mini mold. And you can do that again and again and again and just have funky little bits and pieces that would look fantastic all over here. And these are very friendly together, so look at how fun that is to add that other piece on here. Now, when you make your bead, you can cover the entire surface with all of these little molded impressions, or you can just put one or two in strategic areas. It's totally up to you. What I suggest is that you make about a dozen of these beads and just experiment. See what you like more. Add a little bit, uh, put a whole lot, put less. Just play with it. Have fun. You do not have to make a masterpiece the first time you touch the clay. Give yourself permission to screw around and mess up. That's where all the fun lives in the mess up part. So enjoy that. All right, so now once we've got our impressions on there, we've got it all filled out how we want, we of course can use powders to color it, which we know how to do from the rest of the series, um, but we can instead bake it and then add acrylic paint as an antiquing method. It's just a little something different that you might want to add to your repertoire. So luckily, I happen to have one that is finished and baked, but not yet colored. So I'm going to take one of these little wiry things here. I'm going to shove that back on so I have it's like a popsicle now, mm, tasty knot. Um, but now I can my acrylic painting. You can get your gloves on so you don't get acrylic paint all over your fingers. That's always preferable. Luckily, acrylic paint washes off really easily. Um, so that's okay, you don't have to do that. But let's go ahead and use some sponges. You can use the kind for washing dishes 
or a natural sponge. They both work fantastic. And we're going to want some paint. Now I've got a couple different colors here that I think will look nice on here. I've got a metallic green and a metallic kind of a blue violet color for some reason. So I'm going to put some of this green in here and let's just see how that works. And then if I want to use a little bit of this purpley blue for accents, I've got some of that as well. All right, so you're going to have a little bit of water nearby, which I happen to have. And I like to have a paper towel just for any potential disasters, of which there are usually several. And let's pick this paintbrush. So get your paintbrush a little wet, get rid of the excess water, and try to work with your paints mostly as they have come out of the tube and not adding a lot of water to them. When you add a lot of water to your paint and then put it on polymer clay, polymer is a plastic and it's going to bead up and not stick on. So you want your paints to be very paste-like. And I'm just going to do a little section of this. I'm not going to do the whole thing just because you get the idea here. You see what I'm doing is I'm shoving the paint down into all the cracks. I'm going to wipe it off the surface so I don't care that paint's on the surface. I want it down in all those little crevices because that's where it ought to live. All right, so now I'm going to take my, my sponge and I'm just going to wipe off that first layer. And then I'm going to take a second nice clean sponge and I'm just doing it gentle. My sponges have been wet and then wrung so they're almost dry and you can see what happens here. Look at that. How exciting is that? All of the colors get down into the cracks and crevices and make it fun. You can add additional color if you like, put a little top coating on. Just remember that acrylic paint it is a surface treatment. So if you're wearing this, it's easy, easy for that paint to get sort of nicked and scratched. When it's down into the cracks and crevices, you don't have that problem because um, it's really just kind of grabbing in places where you're not bumping it around. But when it's on the surface, it can sometimes get messed about. So you may not want to do that. All right, so that was super fun. Are we forgetting anything? Is there anything else we need to do? Hmm. Oh yeah, remember I told you I was gonna show you how to make one with an impression like from a stamp sheet. Well, let's do that. So what I've got is another piece of clay, handily already made in a bead shape. We'll do the same thing of putting the hole through and putting the stem through uh, to hold it. You got that, no worries there. Oh, and by the way, if you don't have those knitting needles, you know what else looks, works really good? Those little bamboo skewers that you sometimes get with appetizers on them. So the next time you're at a fancy party, eat all the appetizers and then go to the bathroom, rinse off the skewers, put them in your purse or bag of holding and then bring them home and you'll have them for later. Just saying. Okay, so now I've got this and I've got a mold here. It's a good idea to give it a little bit of a resist. We have used powder as a resist. We can also use just a little spritz of water. So I've taken my moist um, sponge and given it a little water. And all I'm gonna do is sort of fold it up in here and squash. And this isn't gonna get it all 100% round, but look at that. I did the back and the front all in one go. And then we can do the same thing. We can bake this and then when it's done, we add our acrylic paint. So that is a very easy way to use a stamp sheet to make an impression. I'll bet you you're wondering whatever happened to that mold. Ha, let's take a look at that, shall we? All right, let's bring it back over. I feel like this is done. Do you know how you can tell? When you put your fingernail in it and it doesn't leave a permanent mark, it's ready. Okay, are you watching? Watch this, look at how easy that is. It just pops right off. So now you can use the button again, you can use the clay again, and you have your own wonderful flexible mold to use. How do you like that? If you did like it, hit the like button. We'd love to see that you liked it. And if you wanna share this with your other creative friends that wanna get impressive with polymer clay as well, please do. The more creativity out there, the better. And do not forget, to mash that subscribe button because you don't want to miss a thing from the Fire Mountain YouTube studio. There's so much to learn here. Okay, kids, go impress yourselves with your polymer and impress your friends. Just have fun.